เป็นในในเข้ามาฟังในมาอ่านกันนะขอจิตนายมาติดต่อมาเป็นทางย่อมกันบอกมาจากเส้นเลือดมาจากตรงเส้นละว่าอันจะจะมีทางเส้นเลือดเป็นเส้นเลือดเส้นเลือดเส้นเลือดสลาวันิมรักนุกุมาฮิวรักนะ We finished the battle of Wahad yesterday and the companions of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم with the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم they went back to Al Madinah. They went back to Al Madina with with all of their wounds and with all of their sadness for what happened with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They went back to Al Madina with with all of their wounds and with all of their sadness for what happened with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They went back to Al Madina with with all of their wounds and with all of their sadness for what happened Start to check before they going back. He start to check those who passed away from his companions. This was in Ohod. So there were so many. There were over seventy Muslims. They passed away there. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, he let he asked to bury them. Each two or three together in one grave. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam he said, "Check who knows Quran more. Let him become their leader in the grave." The Prophet Muhammad Sallam he didn't say, "Check who has more money to be their leader in the grave." He didn't say, "Check who has more power, who has more family members to be the leader." He said, "Check who knows more Quran, because the companions of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم they didn't have the habit that we have now. They didn't have the habit of of." The idea that if I know Quran by heart, I will go to paradise without being asked. Today there are a lot of things. Today there are many hadith. We take it in this way. Like the Prophet Muhammad was telling us, for example, in one of them, the hadith that he said, "Allah is the Lord and one is the Lord. The one who made the sun and the moon and the stars. If Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, because of you, make someone a Muslim, then this is better for you than all what is in the earth." That in the sun, 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 in the But actually, the translation of the hadith is not this. The hadith says, "La yahdi Allah bi tarajul anwahida." Yahdi. What is the meaning of yahdi? It is coming from Nidaya. When we pray, what we say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim. So, so, so. Then, ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqim. So, la yahdi Allah bi tarajul anwahida. That means. If because of you, someone is guided. Means, if Allah Taala wa Taala use you as a tool to guide someone to Allah, then this is big deal. It means that Allah use you as a tool to guide someone to Allah, then this is big deal. It means that Allah use you as a tool to guide someone to Allah, then this is big deal. But today, people they take it in the wrong way. They just catch anyone on the street, and then they say, "Say la ilaha illallah, ya la ilaha illallah." Oh, okay, now I got something very big. Now, we're just in the street, and then they say, "Say la ilaha illallah," and then they say, "Oh, okay, now I got something very big." Now, we're just in the street, and then they say, "Say la ilaha illallah," and then they say, "Oh, okay, now I got something very big." Now, we're just in the street, and then they say, "Say la ilaha illallah," and then they say, "Oh, okay, now I got something very big." Now, we're just in the street, and then they say, "Say la ilaha illallah," and then they say, "Oh, okay, now I got something very big." Now, we're just in the street, and then they say, "Say la ilaha illallah," and then they say, "Oh, okay, now I got something very big." Now, we're just in the street, and then they say, "Say la ilaha illallah," and then they say, "Oh, okay, now I got something very big." Of course, you heard about street dawa in all over the world. What is this street dawa? Go on the street, catch people who are drinking, who are committing adultery, who are stealing people, who are cheating people, who are doing all of 
this and then talk to them about Islam and how nice Allah is and then all what we are asking you to do is just to say La ilaha illallah, you will go to paradise. But was it like this? Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an in Harub al Ridda in the war after the Prophet Muhammad passed away. In, in some companions they said we will not pay the zakah. They said that the zakah was to the Prophet and from now on the Prophet is dead, we will not pay the zakah. So what did Abu Bakr do? So what he did, he was fighting against that. Then Umar ibn Khattab came to that. He said, Ya Abu Bakr, are you fighting? Are you going to kill people who say, La ilaha illallah? Then what did Abu Bakr say? He said, La ilaha illallah, like in the but in the real way. This is not the real way. Why Why Abu Bakr consider it not the real way? Only because they didn't want to pay Zakat. Today we are taking from Islam the surface only. Today we are only practicing what is on the shell, that's all. But Islam is not like this. If you go to the to the uh, walnut, if I give you walnut, you know the walnut? If I give you a walnut which is very fresh. Now, can you take it and eat it right away? If you eat it right away, what will happen? You will break your teeth. You have to break it first. You have to open it. You have to remove the shell. You have to eat what is inside. Today, we are taking Islam as this walnut. And we only talk about the surface. Look at the surface, how nice it is. It is not nice. It is not like this. You have to understand. You have to understand that Islam is a full package. If you don't use it all, you are not making use of it. So, the first one of those companions, Hanbala. We already mentioned what happened to Hanbala. Hanbala was the one who was who was uh, who was a groom who was still. It was the first night for him, for his marriage, and then he went to, to the jihad without taking shower, and then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, he said, why I see Hanbala, why I see Hanbala wait between the sky and earth? So they told him what happened. So he said, angels are making are making the ghusl for him. This is one of those companions. There are a lot. We take few of them and then we go back to Medina. Another one is Amr ibn al-Jamur, the one who has a problem in his leg. The one who said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to get in paradise with this slave. And he did, and the Prophet Muhammad said, This is authentic hadith. The Prophet Muhammad said that Allah told to Abu al Jamur without the barrier, talk to him directly and asked him, What do you want? You ask, What do you want? I will give you. He is dead already, he is in paradise. What will he 
asked for? What do you think he asked for? He said, Ya Allah, I want you to return me back to the light. So I will fight and be killed for the sake of you again. But Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala he said, I already gave a word that the one who leaves the dunya will not come back again. So I will not return you back to the light, but I will give you something else that you will see me all the time. There is no barrier between me and you forever. Sa'ad ibn Rabia, another companion. The Prophet Muhammad Sallam asked, he said, go and check, see, see how the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, see how soft was he. The Prophet Muhammad Sallam, he was bleeding totally. His teeth were broken. His cheek, we said yesterday what happened to him. His shoulder was broken. All of him was bleeding. But then he was still asking about his companions. He asked, he asked, where is Sa'ad ibn Rabi? He said, go and check where is Sa'ad. Ali Ali Thalib, he went to check where is Sa'ad. He found Sa'ad was almost dead. Not yet dead, still, still can say some words. Listen what he said. Ali, he said, Sa'ad, because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, go, if you find that he is still alive, tell him that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sending his regards to you. So, Ali bin Abi Talib, he saw Sa'ad, who was dying. He looked at him and said, Ya Sa'ad, Inna Rasulah yukhariu kamihu salam. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sending his regards to you. And asking you, because this is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, send my regards to him and ask him, how is he? And he is asking you, Sa'ad, how are you? What did Sa'ad say? He said, I am dead. But then listen, listen, listen to what he said. He said, Abdi Rasul Amin Salam. Send my regards to the Prophet Muhammad. He is dying. He is dying. Abdi Rasul Amin Salam. Send my regards to the Prophet Muhammad. And tell him, Jazakallahu Khayyan. And tell him, May Allah reward him. Then, then he looked at Ali and he said, because Ali is from Al Muhajiri. From you know what is you know who is Al Muhajiri, right? Then he looked at Ali. He said, Ya Ali, tell your people, tell your people, you are losers if the Prophet Muhammad died and one of you is still alive. You have no excuse. Then, Sa'ad, because Sa'ad is from al ansar he said, Ya Ali, send my regards to my people. And tell them, you are losers if the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu died and one of you is still alive. You have no excuse. Ali went back to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and he told him what Sa'ad said. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, he said, may Allah accept from Sa'ad. Sa'ad 
Sa'ad was spreading Islam when he is alive and when he is dead. Of course, Sa'ad, when he finished talking, then he passed away. He said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, he passed away. Abdullah ibn Jahsh, another companion. Abdullah, before the war, what did he say? Listen to his dua. He was saying, Allahumma inni uqasimu alayk, O Allah, I, I, I'm swearing on your behalf. This is if we want to translate it. Like, for example, for example, I want Brother Sultan to do something. So I say, I swear by Allah, you will do it. Then he doesn't want my swear to be fake, so he will do it. So Abdullah, he said, Uqsimu alayka ya Allah, oh Allah, I swear by you that you will do so, so, so. And nalqal adu wa ghadan, that tomorrow we will fight. Fayaqtuluna, so they will kill me. So he is asking Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to let, to allow the, the, enemy to kill him. Then, okay, يقتلونه. so what? وَيَبْقُرُونَ بَطْنِ And they cut and open my stomach. وَيُمَثِّلُونَ بِي And take it all out and cut me into pieces. فَأَلْقَاكَ مَقْتُولًا So Allah, I will meet you in this way. So you Allah ask me. Who did this to you and why? So I reply. This happened to me in this for the sake of you, Allah. The companions of the Prophet Muhammad they heard his dua, and the Prophet Muhammad he heard his dua. After Uhud, they were checking, and they found Abdullah, they found this person, dead, exactly the same, happened to him exactly the same as the dua he was asking for. Now listen what the Prophet Muhammad said. He said, Sadaqallah Allah. He said, He was sincere in what he said. So Allah given him what he asked. Another another companion who didn't join Badr. When Badr finished and he didn't join, he was so sad and upset. So what did he say? He said, Ya Allah, give me a chance to fight for the sake of you and I will show you what I will do. When Uhud start, what did he say? He said, Ya Allah, I am asking you the Shahada. I am asking you to die for the sake of you, and I want an arrow to come here. And also the same, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, he saw him dead with an arrow here. The Prophet Muhammad Sallam said, he was sincere with what he was asking, so Allah gave him what he was asking. Today, today, is there anyone?
one of us who is ready but sincere, ready to die for the sake of Allah? To leave the family, to leave the, 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 the kids, to leave the air condition, to leave all of those things. Are we are we ready for this today? We know the answer. Those are the companions of the prophet. Now listen what happened. They went back, and the prophet Muhammad was unable to walk. Sad and another companion, they were helping him to go back home. And all of them, they were injured and, and so tired and, and, and. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he home and then it was Maghrib, so he went out, he prayed. He went out, he prayed, Maghrib, and he went back home. So, so, and all of them, they were also as tired as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Did they finish? Not yet. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he heard that Abu Sufyan is collecting the army again and he wants to finish it totally. So he wants to go back to Medina and destroy all the Muslims there. You know, the Battle of Ohad, it was on Saturday. And so they slept. Sunday morning, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he asked Bilal to announce, to announce to come for jihad. They already had what they had last day. They are tired. They are injured. They are. They have their wounds. They are bleeding. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he announced that everybody who was with us yesterday, only those who were with us yesterday, they come. Only those who were with us yesterday, they come for jihad. So, none of them, or all of them come, not even one didn't come. All of them came. Now, in another hand, there were some people, they didn't join Ohud. And they came to apologize to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu didn't accept their apology, apology and didn't allow them to come for the second war. So those who came, those who came, they already joined the war on Saturday, which is Ohad. They came and they were, you know, holding and hugging each other because they were so tired, they were unable to walk. Even, remember the two boys? Remember the two boys? One of them was carrying another and was, you know, just bullying him because he was unable to walk also. This calling was not to give medals to them. No, it was for war. Very clear. Come, we have a war. So they came. And the Prophet Muhammad also he was unable to walk, but he stand up and he took the army and he went to one place to uh, one area that was supposed that Abu Sufyan 
can see it as he is coming closer to Medina. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he collected them and he told them, "We didn't finish fighting. We haven't finished the fight. We have to run after our enemy." And see, this is the point that the Muslim suppose, not suppose that the real Muslim never give up. And you may lose your money. You may lose your health. This is not important. But never lose your determination. Muslim never lose their determination. Muslim, they are proud of their belief. They are proud of their religion. They are proud of Quran. They are proud of Sunnah. They are proud of their dignity and their determination. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi took them and he went to to that place, to that area. What they did, they spent three nights there. During the daytime, they collect the branches, you know, the wood, the branches of the trees. And at night, they make a huge fire. So this huge fire, it shows that this fire belongs to an army that maybe one, two, three thousand people. They walk to reach to that place. They walk eight miles. Imagine eight miles after such war with all of this wood and blood. Eight miles walking on their foot. Why? Because they know that they didn't finish yet. They have to finish their mission. Until they reach to that place, that place called Hamra al-Asad. Until they reach to that place, and then they start to make this fire at night. And from that place, from that place, Actually, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chose that place because from that place, and Mushrikeen, the disbelievers, they could see very small parts of them. They cannot really see them all, but they could see the very huge fire. And one more thing happened. So Abu Sufyan started to feel worried, started to become worried. You know, he was scared that maybe they had another army in Medina and we didn't know. And now they are bringing them and they are coming to, to kill us all. And also there was one person, his name is Muhammad al Khuzai. Also there was one companion of the Prophet Muhammad but he was hiding his Islam. He went to Abu Sufyan and he started to discuss, he started to tell Abu Sufyan how huge army Muslims had. But actually, they were very few and and injured all of them. So when Abu Sufyan he saw this fire for three nights and he heard from Al Khuzai, then he said, better to go back with half winning rather than going back with full lose. Now, 
so he went back to Mecca. 阿布斯蒂尔看到那么大的一个萤火，然后又听到这个卧底的这个穆斯林讲这一番话呢，他想说呢，我们赢一半总比全军覆没的好，所以他就折回去了。No, so when he went back, Muslims when they saw this, you know those I mean the army when they saw this, they got the hope in the game. 当那些不信道的军队折返了，然后那些穆斯林看到了之后呢，又重新燃起了希望。They felt that they are, that they were doing well, and that they didn't really lose. It was only part of a loss. That's all. Now remember, yesterday we stopped on one one point. That did they lose or they didn't lose? According to the history, yes, they lost. But according to Islam, they lost or not? Actually, according to Islam, they win. Why? Imagine, imagine, if those 50 or 70 or 80, when they went down, remember, they left the mountain, they went down and they start to collect the things with others. Imagine if after they did this, Muslims win or not. What would happen? Muslims, they will not listen to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam anymore. Because they say that anyway, we didn't listen to him and we still win. We disobey him and we still win. But actually, the real, the real uh, winning. I mean, they win. Why? Because you, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad you part of you, only small part of you. This obey the Prophet Muhammad for only one order, so you lost the war. So this is a very clear message that if you don't want to lose again, do not disobey the Prophet Muhammad. Allah Ta'ala wa Ta'ala, He told them in Quran, أَوَلَمَّا أَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَدْ أَصَبْتُمْ مِثْلَيْهَا قُلْتُمْ أَنَّا هَذَا قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ أَبْقُسْكُمْ Allah Ta'ala wa Ta'ala, He said that you, when you have this problem, then you said, you, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you said, how come this happened to us? Allah Ta'ala wa Ta'ala replied them, قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ أَبْقُسْكُمْ Tell them, you Muhammad replied them, tell them this is because of you. Do not make mistakes and then say this is what Allah wants. Do not be lazy and useless and then say what to do, this is what Allah wants me to do. When, when one person during the period of Umar ibn al-Khattab, when one person he was drinking alcohol in front of people, so he has to be slashed forty times. This is this is Islam. So then, when Umar ibn al-Khattab he ordered one person to slash him, then that person what did he say? He said, "Yeah, I'm here to He said, "He said you are the lead." You know, he he said, "This happened to me because Allah wants it to happen to me." So Omar al Khattab he didn't talk to him and he beat him forty times. Then after that person was beaten, Omar ibn Khattab looked at him and he told him, "This what Allah wants you to want to happen to you." This is the understanding of the faith and destiny. A lot of people they don't understand this point. One of the pillars of belief.
believe is al-iman bil-qada' wal-qadar khairihi wa sharrihi. Right is to believe in fate and destiny, no matter good or bad. Right. Actually, if we take it now, listen carefully. If we take it from outside, this is a main reason not to do anything. This is a main reason for me to be lazy and sit at home and don't do anything. Right or wrong? Let us think about it. If my destiny that tomorrow I will get ten million dollars, so no need to work. So even if I'm sleeping at home, I will get this ten million dollars. Right or wrong? And if my destiny is that tomorrow I will not get anything, so even if I work so hard, I will not get anything. Right or wrong? This is Islam. So this means that we shouldn't do anything. Just relax, sit at home, and then money will come from up if if you will get it, and money will not come if you will not get it. Some people they understand the fate and destiny in this way. And this is wrong. This is not the fate and destiny. Let me give you an example of what is fate and destiny. The snake. All of us we know the snake. Now the snake is dangerous or not? Suppose it's dangerous. If I have a snake here, then I start to play with the snake. What will happen to me? I will be hurt by the snake and I may die. Right or wrong? Now, the destiny, listen to this carefully to understand. The destiny is that this snake is dangerous. This is destiny. But then, who choose who choose to be hurt by this snake? Or not to be hurt by this snake? Who is the decision maker? Yourself. So, there is a snake here. Either I run away, or I play with the snake. Now, when I play with the snake and I am hurt by the snake, can I blame Allah? Then I say that what to do? It is written. It is confirmed that this will happen to me. No, if you wait out, nothing will happen to you. Got the point? Got the point? So the destiny is the thing that you cannot change, but it is not touching you. The snake is not hurting you. The snake is dangerous, but it's not hurting you. If you want to be hurt by the snake, it is up to you. So don't say, so don't say that it is, it is my destiny. No, you choose it by yourself. This is, this is one part. Now the second part, which is important, we mentioned it before, but it is important to mention it again. The Prophet Muhammad said, this is authentic hadith. The Prophet Muhammad said that when the womb, when, when the fetus is in the womb of the mother, after 40 days, then 40 days, then 40 days. So 120 days full, Allah Taala will order one angel to come to this fetus to put things over this fetus. What are those things? First, his birth date. Second, his death date. Third, third, his gender. Fourth, his, listen to this carefully, his income. Fourth, and this is, this is even more, you know, more strange. Fifth, what is fifth? His final destination.
Station, Hell or Paradise. 第五个呢，就是说他会唱，他最后的终结站，他是唱片上的下地狱。哦 ，This is authentic. This 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 So now it is confirmed each one of us who will go to hell, who will go to paradise. So we all, who will go to hell, will go to paradise. Yes, it is confirmed. 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 Yes, it is For example, then why why to be an imam? Just forget it and go and have fun outside. And if it is confirmed to go to paradise, then Allah will forgive me. Right? This is the happy. Let us explain to understand what is going on. First of all, first of all. We go to the to the hell and paradise first before and first and then we go to the income. It is confirmed that Brother Ibrahim is going to paradise. No. Does he know what is confirmed? He knows or he doesn't know. He doesn't know. It is confirmed according to what? It is confirmed according to the knowledge of Allah Taala. Is according to Allah's great knowledge, His wisdom, is confirmed. Now, does Brother Ibrahim have anything to do with the knowledge of Allah? That Brother Ibrahim, he knows that Allah has knowledge of many things. He has nothing to do with the knowledge of Allah. He has nothing to do with the knowledge of Allah. He has nothing to do with the knowledge of Allah. So, so. First, he has nothing to do with the knowledge of Allah. Second, he doesn't know what is the confirmation. He doesn't know which one is confirmed. So what does he have to do then? Work on going to paradise. Because you are not sure. Now, someone may ask, This will not make any change because it is confirmed. Then we say it is confirmed according to what? It is confirmed according to the knowledge of Allah Taala that is all. Give you an example. What is that? Matarul Ara. No way to compare, but just to give you an example. Let us say, for example, there is one movie in the cinema. Or on TV. I saw that movie maybe six, seven, ten times. So I know it by heart. And then I am sitting with with you, and then oh, the movie again on TV. Then I told, then I start to tell you, see, now this will happen, now this will happen, and now this will happen, and then now this will die, and then now this will win, and then. So, does it mean that I am the one who produced the movie? Now, I'm just saying, ah, next time will be how? Next time will be how? That means it means that this film is me making. Am I the one who produced the movie? No. One second. Does it mean that I know the future? That means I know the future. No. I already saw the movie ten times, so this is why I know it. No. I already saw the movie ten times, so this is why I know it. So I am not controlling those actors and actresses in the movie. I am not the producer of the movie, and I don't know the future. Well, no, 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 And you know that your kid is lazy, not studying well, not good at studying. Then you will say, anyway, I know that he will fail. Allah knows how you will do it. He has not forced you to do it, but he knows how you will do it. It's like a mother who knows her son is lazy, her husband doesn't like to study, the teacher doesn't like to play. He has not forced her to play or do anything, but he knows how you will do it. Did you?
you force them to fail. 那就是你有你有就是强迫他就是那个考考试没有过关吗 ？No, you didn't force him, but according to what you see, you can say this. But you as a human being, you may be wrong because maybe at the end your son suddenly become good and study very well and then succeed. But with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, He knows, He knows the future. And he knows what are you going to do, but he's not forcing you to do anything. 就说你没有强迫你的孩子去做什么事情，但是你你知道他会，因为你根据他，你对他的了解，你知道他会怎么做。那但是他，但是你不见得就是说在你的预期之内，因为还是有可能会改变的。但是阿拉就不同，阿拉他了解我，他假如了解我们，他知道我们会怎么做，他没有强迫我们怎么做，但是呢，他知道我们会怎么做。那这这个是他阿拉他的大智大智慧，那是我没有办法呃能够了解的。So this is why Allah Tabaraka wa Taala here He said, "Qul huwa min indi ambusiku." You tell them this is because of you. So Allah 呢，当时就跟那个先知弟子们说了，这是因为你们的关系。Because you choose to disobey the Prophet from Allah Alayhi Wasallam. Because you choose to disobey the Prophet, the result of disobeying the Prophet is to fail. 因为呢，你们自己选择了走这一条路去违背先知，所以呢，你们就会打打输。Listen to this. Allah Tabaraka wa Taala says, "Qul in kuntum tuhibun Allah, fatabiyuni yuhibkum Allah." This is ayah in Quran. Qul, you Muhammad, tell them, "In kuntum tuhibun Allah, if you love Allah, fatabiyuni, follow me, Muhammad, follow me, yuhibkum Allah. Allah will love you." In Quran, in Quran, Allah is saying, "Muhammad, you say Muhammad, right?" Yes. Then you say. But in kuntum tuhibun Allah, you Muhammad, you tell them, if you love Allah. 如果说你你穆罕默德跟他们讲说，如果说你们爱阿拉的话。Follow me. 那你就要去服从我。Allah will love you. Allah 就会爱你。This is rule. 这是规定。This is rule in Quran. 这古兰经的规定。So, do you want Allah to love you? 你要阿拉去爱你吗 ？Yes or no? If yes, then all what you have to do is to follow the Sunnah. 所以你要的话，那你要做的话就是完全的去效仿圣经。We said before, if you want to understand Quran more and more, make the ayah the opposite. You will understand it more. 再说你要了解古兰经的话呢，你要更了解的话，你可以把它反过来理解。Give you an example. Call it "Un Dhu Hibun Allah Fa Tabi'uni Yafikum Allah." Say, if you love Allah, follow me. Allah will love you. 你要说呢，如果你爱阿拉的话，那你就要遵，你要就是要遵从我。So. Take the second part and make it upside down. So, 把第二部分把它反过来讲 Don't follow me, Allah will hate you. 那说你不遵从我的话，阿拉就会讨厌你 Got it? Follow me, Allah will love you. So, if you don't follow me, what will happen? Allah will not love you. 就说你遵从我的话，阿拉就爱你你不遵从我的话，阿拉就不爱你 Today, how many of us follow the Prophet Muhammad? 那我们今天有多少人真的是遵循、遵效法圣经 We know. So, see, this is the point. This is the point. The rule, the rule is the destiny. You cannot change. 那这个规规定的这个规矩呢，就是这个命运，这是没有办法改变的。But take it or leave it, it is your decision. 那你要接受或是不管它的话是随便你。What is the meaning of take it or leave it? The same, the same example of the snake. Play with the snake or run away from the snake. Who is the decision maker in this? You. 就说你要做还是不要做是随便你，是你自己决定的。Clear. Now we come. We go to the income. 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 Now we come. Tomorrow, what is tomorrow? Tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. Brother Kamal will get ten thousand dollars. 就是说他在出生之前就已经写定好了，就是明天他会得到一万块。If he sit at home and sleep the whole night, will he get this ten thousand dollars? 如果他就是在家里无所事事，然后整天都在睡觉的话，他明天会得到这个钱吗 ？Yes or no? Yes, of course he will get it. 他当然还是 confirmed. 当然他已经写定好了，所以他一定会得到一万块。Because it is confirmed. 因为已经写定了。If all of us we work so hard not to let him get it, will he get it? No, we all do not. Want to use every way to not let him get this one thousand dollars. Yes, of course, because it is confirmed. He will still get it because it is confirmed. Clear? Now, in another hand, if it is confirmed that tomorrow 
Brother Kamal will make ten dollar. Ten dollar. But tomorrow he wake up at five o'clock morning and he kept on working until ten evening. And he has a lot of customers in his clinic, let us say. So suppose how much money he will make a lot. But how much he will make at the end of the day? Ten dollars. Now what does this mean? This means that I sit at home and I don't work. Right? It is confirmed. No matter how hard working am I or how lazy am I, it is confirmed. Right or wrong? Okay. No, it is right. It is confirmed. But let us understand this in the correct way. It is confirmed how much money are you going to make tomorrow. But you are the decision maker. You want to get it in halal or in haram. Do you want to get it with blessing and rewarding from Allah or you want to get it with the sin? Those are not confirmed. You are the decision maker in this. So, now, as Muslims, let us ask ourselves a question. If I make ten million dollar without blessing, what will this ten million dollar do to me? Nothing. And if I make ten dollar with blessing, what will this do to me? Everything. So what does this mean? This means, first, I work hard in halal way. Second, I am satisfied with all what I make, all what I lose every day. Third, never regret for anything happened to me. Why? Because I should only regret when I make haram things. It is confirmed that Brother Kamal tomorrow will make only one thousand. But tomorrow he has to pay Brother Sultan ten thousand. If he doesn't pay it, maybe he will go to jail, maybe Brother Sultan will shout him, maybe something bad will happen to him. He has to pay ten thousand. But it is confirmed that he will make only one thousand. So he works so hard tomorrow, from morning to evening, very hard. At the end of the day, how much money did he make? One thousand. And it is the time for Brother Kamal to pay the ten thousand to Brother Sultan. Now, did Brother Kamal work hard in halal way and for the sake of Allah and never disobey Allah in that working? Yes. So he got this one thousand plus. So then, Allah Taala wa Taala He will handle it. How? Maybe, maybe, Brother Sultan, Allah Taala wa Taala will give the hint to Brother Sultan to go to Brother Kamal and tell him, give me only one thousand, and I don't want the nine thousand. Maybe Allah will give Brother Sultan such a one, one, one idea, and then Brother Sultan will tell Brother Kamal to give me. Or maybe Brother Kamal will go to Brother Sultan and will tell him, "Sorry, the only thing I could make today is this one thousand." So Brother Sultan, because also he is a Muslim, because also he knows this, he immediately will know that what is written and confirmed for me to get from Kamal is one thousand. So he will take it and say, "Jazakallahu khairan," and I don't want the nine thousand. 那或许另一种说法就是 ，Brother Kamal 去跟 Brother Sultan， 就是跟他说，我很抱歉，我今天只能给你一千块。然后呢，那 Brother Sultan 呢，如果他是一个真正的穆斯林，他也知道说已经协定好了，他今天就能就只能从这边拿到一千块。那他就会跟他讲说，没关系，你给我一千块，那其他的话就不用了。So Brother Kamal, he made one thousand plus blessing, 
can equal to ten thousand. So Brother Papa, he is he can do for ten thousand, but because of Allah's mercy, he can do ten thousand as one thousand. Brother Sultan accepts to take only this one thousand. Accepted because he knows that this is what is confirmed for him to get, and he said, "I don't want the nine thousand, so this one thousand is got it plus blessing, so it became equal to ten thousand." That brother Sultan, because he accepted, so ah, this is just Allah just confirmed. I just took one thousand coins, so he accepted, so he just added Allah's blessing. So he just took one thousand coins, but in fact, he just added one thousand coins. So nobody lost. So two people didn't lose. And not only this, they got. The rewarding from Allah Taala to us Allah on the day of judgment. And in the judgment, they will be rewarded for this thing. They will be rewarded for this thing. They will be rewarded for this thing. And listen to this. This is very important in our daily life. On the day of judgment, there will be, you know, promotions. In the judgment, there will be promotions. And open market. There will be an open market. What is the meaning of open market? On the day of judgment, this is authentic hadith. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "On the day of judgment, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will say, 'Ya ibadi, my servant, I forgive you. You forgive each other.'" 就是说呢，这是真实的圣训呢。在审判日的时候，阿拉会说呢，就是呃，就是我就是原谅你们，那你们也互相要原谅彼此。إِنِّي أُشْهِدُكُمْ أَنِّي قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَكُمْ فَتَصَالَحُ I am telling you, this is what Allah says. I am telling you that I forgive you. What is between you and me, I forgive it. You manage it between each other. That Allah 可能会跟你讲说呢，你跟我之间的问题呢，我就完全都都赦免你了。但是你跟别人之间的问题的话，你自己去处理。Now listen to this and try to understand it. On the day of judgment, who will forgive who? 在审判日有谁会去原谅谁？ Who will forgive who? Wait. Allah says in Quran, "يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبنيه." Allah says in Quran, "On that day, people they don't know each other. They run away from from wife, husband, daughter, son, whatever." Allah in Quran, in the Quran, he tells us, "In the day of judgment, people will forgive each other." So this means that on the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So in the day of judgment, who will forgive who? So Except who? No, the, the prophet is something else. Except who? Except the one who used to forgive people here. 除了一种人，他在世的时候呢，他就常常会去原谅别人。The one who is familiar of forgiving people here, because this is the habit. This is the habit. Here, someone backbites me. May Allah forgive me. Someone attack me. May Allah forgive me. Someone hurt me. Leave him to Allah. Someone cheat me. Leave him to Allah. On the day of judgment, when Allah says this, I will stand up and say, "Oh Allah, you are the witness. I forgive everybody." 就是说呢，就在他活着的时候呢，他就心胸宽大，他就说有人伤害他啊，背叛他，怎么样，他都说啊，愿阿拉原谅他，愿阿拉赦免他。那在审判日的时候，当阿拉已经讲到说，我跟你之间的话，我就不饶恕你的话，他听到这个，他就说阿拉，那我也原谅所有伤害我的人。This is not something. This is not something I planned. This is not something I make it in my schedule. No, this because there the action is according to the habits here. Because the judgment, our 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 actions will be according to our daily habits. Now, when I stand up and say, "Oh Allah, you are the witness. I forgive everybody." Now, when I stand up and say, "Oh Allah, you are the witness. You are the witness that I forgive everybody here." Then Allah Taala wa Taala will talk to angels. He will say, "Take him to paradise right away." 就是说到时候的话呢，你就会跟说阿拉，你作证呢，就是我原谅所有的人，然后这时候阿拉就会命令天使说，把他带到天堂去。Why? Because don't think that you are more generous than Allah. So what? You forgive the people, then I, Allah, I forgive you. Go to paradise. I am more generous than. 所以不要以为你比你比阿拉还心胸宽大，你都说你原谅所有的，那阿拉当然是原谅你啊，就是所以就是让你上天堂。See? So are we practicing here for the exam on the day of judgment? 我们现在呢，有开始练习要去做那个审判日的那个考试考题了吗 ？Or we say leave it until that day and then we see what to do。还是我说啊，等到那天我再来做考试卷就好了，现在不用练习。Those are things we need to understand. For example, there is one hadith, one authentic hadith. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "Inna rajula 
the person sometimes he say a word he say a word he doesn't know what is he saying only for making fun only for making fun of someone only to say a joke the prophet Muhammad sallallahu says yahwi biha sab'ina kharifan fi nar jahannam he because of this word because of this word he will go deep deep in the hell sab'ina kharifan 70 years 70 years diving in jahannam for one word in his life the prophet Imagine a 70 years diving, when will get up? And by the way, remember when we are talking about, about time in the year after, this is for us. One day equal to 50,000. So if one day equal to 50,000 years, so 70 years, you check how many million. For what? For a word. Like for example, this person, oh, he is bad. He is, he is ugly. He is um, not educated. He is whatever. When you are saying it, no matter how small word is it, word is it. When you are saying it to humiliate this person, if this person doesn't doesn't forgive you on the day of judgment, then this word will cause you seventy years dying in hell. So, are we thinking of this? And in another hand, the person who take one dorha means one dollar haram. This is one of the punishments. Angels will take this dorha, this dull dollar, the haram one, they will throw it in the hell. And they will tell that person who make it for haram. They will throw him in hell. They will say, bring it and go out. Will he be able to bring it? No way. For what? For what? Why? All of this is for what? See now he was sitting and talking and laughing and then and then and then. in any moment, in any second, any one of us may die. Are we ready for that moment? What did we offer to Islam? What did we do for the sake of Allah? We are, we are always thinking of our needs. Our, our needs. What, we are always thinking of our benefits. Then how about, how about Islam? How about the hereafter? What did we offer for the hereafter? Those companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu after Uhud, they came back wounded and, and with blood and all of this. Then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said, Hayya ala jihad, come to fight again. All of them, they stand up and go. Why? For what? For what? They didn't say, let us leave. They didn't say, what is your problem? Yesterday we came back. All of them, they stand up and wait. Why? Because of one reason only. Because they have Iman. Because they have belief. Because they know, they know that this life, the best way to end this life is for the sake of Allah.
companions, they got the encouragement and the hope again. But of course, the announcement, the rumors, or not the rumors, the announcements in general, in all Arab tribes, they say that Muslims, they were defeated by Quraysh. So other tribes, they started to, uh, to arrange themselves to go and attack Muslims in Medina. And Muslims in Medina, they were always sleeping and waking up with the weapons. And they were they were not safe at all. You know, even when they go to toilet, they take with them their sword or whatever. See, see, see how much they suffer. All of this only for what? Only for La ilaha illallah Muhammad And then once one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Abad al nahnu khayyibuna ya Rasulullah, he said, are we going to die like this, that the rest of our life we will, we will be scared like this? What did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu say? He said, but you just be patient for for a while only. This is what the Prophet Muhammad said, for a while only. Then what will happen? The Prophet Muhammad said, then Allah wa ta'ala will spread Islam. So there will not be a house or a tent, means even in the desert. There will not be a house or a tent, or all the house and tent, they will hear about Islam. No matter people accept or don't accept. This is the hadith, this is what the Prophet Muhammad is saying. No matter people accept or don't accept. Then the Prophet Muhammad looked at that companion and he said, Atarif al Khira. Do you know Al Khira? Al Khira is one, one city in Iraq. He said, I've never been there, but I heard about it. The Prophet Muhammad he said, Soon the female will travel from Al Hira to Mecca to make Umrah and go back or to make Tawaf and go back and she will not be afraid of anyone. Now you are unable to go to the toilet without the sword, but later that female will go and come, but no one will touch her. But what the Prophet Muhammad said at the end, well, I think that from home was dispassionate, but you are impatient. Listen, you are impatient. When did the Prophet Muhammad say this? We are after Ohod. Ohod is when? In the second year after after Hijra, after immigrants. So means totally how many years after Islam? Twelve years. After twelve years of suffering, one companion asked this question to Prophet Muhammad and he said, You are impatient. Twelve years. No, ten, 
So, so 10 in Mecca, 13 in Medina, not, not 13 in Mecca, 10 in Medina. So, after 12 years, after 12 years, and 13 years, 12, 13 years, and the Prophet Muhammad is saying, you are in faith. Tell you another thing about the time, the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. Do you remember the Prophet Yusuf? When his brothers, they throw him in the well, how old was he? When he saw the dream, how old was he that time? He was, no, actually he was seven years old. And when his father and mother and, of course, their mother, but anyway, and brothers, when did they come back to him? When he was 47. How many years? Forty years. And he was patient. The mother of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. The mother of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. What Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said, Inna radduhu ilayki wa ja'iluhu min al-mursaleen. You throw your son in the sea. Remember we said this before. If you are afraid that they will kill your son, then we have the solution. What is the solution? Throw him at the sea. What is this solution? See, see Allah wa Taala says this in Quran. If you are afraid that you will lose him, okay, should be hold him, hug him, hide him. No. When Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is talking, when you believe, you close your all organs and you just follow. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is talking to, to, to Musa's mother. If you are afraid that you will lose him, throw him in the sea. When she throw him in the sea, when he, when Musa was in her hands, so who was taking care of Musa? She. When she followed the rules of Allah, she followed the order of Allah, throw him in the sea. So who became taking care of him? Allah. Who is better in taking care of him? Of course Allah. Today, today, Am I following the rules of Allah, the orders of Allah wa ta to take care of my things? No. Today I think that I am better than him. I'm smarter than him. I'm stronger than him. I know the situation better than him. So Allah wa ta'ala, what did he tell her? He said, throw him on the sea. And don't worry. Inna radduhu ilayki. We will return him back to you. And we will make him a messenger. Two, three days later, he went back to her. But not in a normal way. Because of him, she and all of her family, all of them, they were living in the palace of her own for free. And not only for free. She was feeding her son and taking money for feeding her son. This would happen when you depend on Allah. But then when you depend on yourself, go ahead and depend on yourself. So, did she ask? Did she ask, okay, in okay, here he is, he came back. And you are going to make him a messenger. Did she ask, when is he going to become a messenger? She didn't ask, why? Because who is talking? Allah. So for sure it will happen. When it happened? When Musa became 40. So after like 38 years. Today, if we are 
information for one two weeks, who we consider ourselves we are a you. You know who is the prophet a you, right? So so we need we need to understand the Prophet Nu alayhi salam nine hundred and fifty years messenger. Nine hundred and fifty years. His CV is nine hundred and fifty years working as messenger. How many people became Muslim with him? Seventy-three. Means each ten years one person. Seventy-three people after nine hundred and fifty years, and he was still working. So we are impatient. When all when 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 the companions of the Prophet Muhammad they saw this, the Prophet Muhammad he realized this, so he said that we have to do something to stop this attacking. Of course, no one, no one was attacking yet. But they were preparing themselves to attack. So what did the Prophet Muhammad do? He was checking who is preparing himself to attack Muslims. So for example, he found that one tribe called Bani Asad, that tribe, they were preparing themselves to attack Muslims in Medina. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he sent army, uh, like 300 people, he sent them there, and they went there, and uh, they, uh, what, what, what to say, they attacked that tribe in a southern, and they could kill all of their army, and they took all what they have, the belongings and so on. Of course, here some people they say that see, see, see the Prophet, see Muhammad was terrorist, he was killing people. Then we say that if he didn't so, he didn't do so, then others they were ready, their army was ready to come and attack and kill the Muslims in Medina. Actually, today this is our problem. We wait until people come and beat us, and then we think to defend or not. The Prophet Muhammad was not doing this. He was investigating and checking. And then when he finds that, yes, this person is the, the enemy of Islam or Muslims, then he sent someone to kill him. Khalid ibn Sufyan al hadani one of the disbelievers, he was, he was not Muslim, and he was going here and there to collect the tribes, to collect the people, to make the army, to attack Medina. And he came to Medina to talk to the hypocrites to arrange with them. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew this. He sent Abdullah bin Unais, he sent one of the companions, and he told them, Ya Abdullah, he told them, Your mission, your mission is to kill Khalid. And he went there and he was talking to him. He said that, and then he killed him. What happened after he killed him? All of those small armies that they were cooperating together, they dismissed. Meanwhile, what happened? Meanwhile, the hypocrites 
Medina, they became, they start to make more trouble. With their leader, of course, Abdullah bin Ubay Musadu. But in another hand, what happened in Medina for Muslims? Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala revealed Quran to tell Muslims that drinking alcohol is prohibited. Why? Why? First, to train them. Second, second, to test them. Third, which is the most important reason, third, to give them another, another way to practice their belief. Remember, we said this example before. If there is someone who is a Kung Fu master, and he says, I have no problem to defeat 20 Kung Fu people here. How can he prove it? The only way to prove it is to bring 20 Kung Fu people and tell the master, go ahead, show us what you can do. Right? But talking will not give any proof. So now here the Muslims, they are increasing their belief. And they are practicing. And already they have, they have the fasting in Ramadan now. And they have the praying and they have the zakat. The praying, they were taking it as a benefit that they are, they are relaxing in praying. But zakat is once a year. And fasting is once a year. Then, okay, I will give you something to practice your belief in your daily life. Because to them, drinking alcohol was the same as drinking water. So, this is a big practicing of Iman. So, in that part, they were increasing their belief, and hypocrites, they were working more for the sake of Shaitan. But when you are increasing your belief, you will not really care what Shaitan is doing. But then, when one ear is listening to Quran and another ear is listening to Shaitan, it doesn't work. See, we are laughing, but today, most of us, we are doing this. Yes, I am reading Quran and I am fasting and I am praying Tarawih and I am doing all the things, but if someone say a bad word about me, then I would go and slaughter him. Yes, I am reading Quran and I am praying Tarawih and I am fasting, but then I give my another ear to someone who is backbiting people, to someone who is saying bad words about people, to someone who is attacking people, to someone who is causing corruption between Muslims. So this ear is with Shaitan. Even if this ear is with Al Rahman, is with Allah Taala wa Taala, but it doesn't work. One big thing happened in Medina. It was uh, a war between Jewish and Muslims. Plus, another thing happened after that war, which is which is which is what we in Muslim. After that war, war, what happened? The hypocrites they said the bad thing about Aisha, radiallahu anha. Just说在那个时候呢，就是呃，拜利纳的这个穆斯林呢，他们跟犹太人，他们有一些呃一些战争，但同时呢，那些伪。
伪信者呢，他们却开始散播一个谣言，就是讲那个阿伊莎的坏话。We will know this story tomorrow, inshallah, tomorrow, tomorrow. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum.